What's up everybody, it is my pleasure to finally introduce our newest survival Minecraft server, Mongoose Coast. Mongoose Coast is a return to form, a bigger focus on the survival part of Minecraft rather than having things just handed to you. We want to bring back that joy of exploring and building with friends. Our last server became bloated with a lot of extra features and I think the ease of access to things kind of ruined the Minecraft experience. So let's dive into how Mongoose Coast is going to be different. So first off, we're going to have two survival maps this time. We're going to have a main one, which is using vanilla generation. So you're going to find working villages. We're going to have the warden and a lot of the things that you would expect out of a normal generation. And then we're going to have what we're calling the pirate world, which is a custom generation that doesn't have everything that a vanilla generated world has. So there's no warden and there's not going to be a couple of biomes in there, but it's going to have massive trees. It's going to have really cool islands, but there's just like too many little things that went wrong that we didn't want it to be the sole world. So we have some generation issues like floating trees or like weird water tiles uh, going up one block. So we're going to offer that one as an extra place for people that are willing to maybe make the land work a little bit more towards their uh, their will than in the vanilla world, which is going to be just, you know, vanilla. Another really cool thing about the pirate world is that it's actually going to have leveled mobs. So the further you go out from the spawn island, the stronger and stronger the um, monsters are going to get. And these stronger monsters are going to have more health. They're going to do more damage, but they're also going to drop more experience and more items. So it's kind of a trade off. And once you start ge getting geared up a little bit more, probably not going to be much of a fight, uh, much of a challenge. But for those uh, out there that want to, uh, to do something a little bit more challenging, the pirate world is going to be very cool. And I think it's going to offer a lot of really cool build opportunities as well. So probably going to have a place in both worlds uh, on my my um, regular character, my regular account. So we are introducing uh, the world border once again. This main world has a world border of 10,000 by 10,000, which is gigantic. And I think it's going to be uh, more than enough of what we need. The pirate world has a world border of 8,000 by 8,000. The nether will have a world border of 5,000 by 5,000. And currently the end... Uh, Dimension does not have a world border because I know finding in cities can be a little difficult so we left it open and that one is not pre-generated at all but this one is and it 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 is so fast if I fly up here change my fly speed to something ridiculous and then just fly off into the distance here you're going to see that this map keeps up with me and no one on here except for me is going to be moving this fast through the world but you can see that it is just keeping up and if I stop it's just going to load the area around me we have never had a server that is this fast um, it is pre-generated so that helps a lot but um, flying this fast even with a pre-generated world would slow things down uh, and this one is keeping up it is fantastic it is so quick so i'm really hoping that that eases our day one loading issues and we're like 95 percent generated on all of our maps i couldn't quite get the pre-gen to go all the way to the edge of the world border so uh if you're really really far out next to the world border there's going to be some generation but it's going to take you a long time to get there and you probably don't even need to be there anyway so you guys will also have access to an online map all of this information along with ranks and commands and everything like that are going to be available on the discord. We're not going to do a website this time around because it's just kind of a pain to set up and you know, everybody's going to be on the discord anyways, probably to find out information or talk to other people. Another really cool feature that we have working already is proximity chat built right into the server. When you log into the server, you're going to get a little uh, audio link here in the chat that you can just click on. It'll open up a browser. And just like that, after you give the browser permission to use your microphone, it'll uh, you can talk to people in game. And it's all based off of, about, I think, about 30 block radius around you will be people that you can hear. 
Uh, the further away you are, the quieter it is. It also gives us the opportunity to do region audio. There's only two downsides for using uh, the proximity chat this way is that there's no push to talk. So everybody's mic will be hot miking. There is a mute, but you have to click on it on the web page. So if you want to mute your mic, you got to go and click on that unless you have a USB interface that I do, like I have where you have a full on mute. You can just turn your microphone off that and then it just, you know, turns off. Um, <laughs> Uh, and the quality is not great. The audio co codec is something a little bit better than like Xbox 360 days. It's not that bad, honestly. It's honestly something that you get used to, um, but it's not as good as Discord. So I want to try to explore one more thing, one more proximity chat thing that does work with Discord to get that audio quality back. But the last time we used this on the last server, it broke on day one. Like I could not get it to work again after day one. It worked fine testing beforehand. After we started to open the server up for people, boom, it didn't work. So um, we right now, the, the browser thing does work. One big change is uh, we are no longer going to have a slash set warp system. You are no longer going to be able to, to slash warp to certain locations. Uh, the only two exceptions really to that is slash spawn and slash home, which I'll get into later. Uh, but we will have these waystones. Now these waystones, there's going to be three different versions. There's a server version, a public version, and then a private version. Um, and the way that these ones work is that um, you place them down and it gives you like a little area. And when you right click on it, it'll open up the menu here and you can see what other server, currently we're in the server uh, section of them. And uh, the only other server one right now is the spawn for the pri pirate world. And then there's a public waystones and there's one public one here right now uh, that I created that'll just take you directly to the mainland because we are on an island. Uh, so if you don't want to make a boat and then try to swim over the land, you can just start here and it'll put you on land. Uh, and then there's private waystones and then your favorite waystones. So once there's a populated amount of waystones on the server, you can go in and, and make favorites by clicking on one and then... Um, I think because they're all my favorites right now, I don't see it, but um, you can just teleport to it and it'll take you to wherever it is. Um, currently, this is also all free uh, to move around. It's not going to charge you money or experience to, to teleport. Uh, I don't think that we're planning on doing that because this is going to be sort of the, the, instead of giving you guys slash warp, which was free, we'll do this, which is a little bit more lore friendly. And like, you have to go to locations and find waystones and everything like that. Uh, I believe the public ones will be seen by everybody, but if you have private ones, those ones will stay private until someone finds it. And if they right click it, then um, it'll add it to their list. So um, there's a lot of uh, neat features here. And uh, yeah, so you just click on them. And it'll teleport you around before we leave, though. Uh, I will say that uh, you will still have slash set home, but it will be linked to only one home. Beforehand in the last server, I think, like, depending on your rank, you could have mul multiple uh, homes. Now, just keep it clean to where there is a slash set home. And to auto do it, you could just right click on a bed and you can see there your. Uh, home was set so now if i do slash home it'll teleport me for free to my home so that is your kind of one free custom teleport you you have but uh, if you wanted to do your own custom one you can do slash set home but if you've already clicked on a bed you have to click in the chat here to overwrite and now my new home is over there and if i do home again it'll take me there I can also right click the bed to redo my home again, the bed. And if I break the bed, that'll remove my home. So um, that is uh, that is your your one little one little teleport custom teleport that you can make. <clears throat> so here we are back at spawn. Feels like it. Oh. My shaders are going nuts. Let's um let's actually turn off the texture pack here because I want to go into 
some crafting materials here. And you can see this is what Spawn looks like without <laughs> the texture pack. I actually have been really enjoying the Excalibur pack recently. The other way to get around, um, like I said earlier, is the other waistcoats. So you guys can actually make these. And these are going to be crafting recipes that you guys will have access to. To create a public waystone, you just do this recipe right here. So this is two smooth stone slabs, a polished andesite, block of gold, which signifies the public one, and then three ender chests. And so that'll create a waystone right here. To make a private one, you're going to need a block of emerald, and then the same... Uh, design as the last one, but you'll need the block of emerald and then two name tags, which, you know, because you're making it private. And then that's going to create a private one. And so with these, you just, wherever you want to place it, you right click and it's going to create a waystone, which is uh, this one's public, but it's currently inactive. If I right click it, it'll add it to, um, to my list of stuff. You can go in here to settings and rename and change it to uh, Potatoes Farm, you know, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, then you can change the description to uh, Potatoes Little Farm. Very nice. And then you can also put a password on it uh, if you wanted it to be public, but passworded to uh, current people. Um, and then you can edit members as well. I haven't done any of this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So if we want to add potato, uh, and then maybe if we wanted to do like mud boy, and then that way, um, only certain people have access to your, your waystone. And now if I go into public, uh, well, I'm, I'm currently at this waystone. So if I go over here, and then under public, I can see Potatoes Farm here, uh, where it has my little description. And um, because I can teleport there, I am on my admin account anyways. I'll teleport you to the to the waystone. And you can break it and then uh, pick it back up. And then the private one will be Emerald. You can see that it says private. And then that'll appear under private waystones here. So same deal. Um, but this one won't immediately appear on the uh, list of waystones. People will have to go and find this one specifically. So th those are waystones. Very cool. Uh, another thing, because we're not allowing slash warp, we're also not going to allow slash back, which is uh, something that a lot of people used. And I, I, always, I always hated slash back. Uh, for people that don't know, if you died someplace, you can do slash back and it'll take you immediately back to your death point. I don't like that. I think that that's kind of immersion breaking. Um, you could also use it if you use slash warp. It'll take you back to the last warp that you were at or the last location you were at. It just, it felt messy. I didn't like it. So to get around that, this same mod will allow you to make, and I, I'm trying to remember the recipe. I think it's this. There we go. You can now make your own death book. And um, the purpose of this too is for people that like want to make death books or, or something um, similar and sell them on the auction house. So that way there's someone that, that, that is making these death books because you can give this to anybody and it'll teleport you to the last one, uh, your last death location. I don't currently have one, so uh, it's not going to work, but you just hold it and right click it and it'll take you back to your death location. Um, there is also a teleportation book, which is another thing that you can use and give out to people. So say you have a location that you'd like someone to come and visit, but it maybe it's kind of far. You guys can meet up here at spawn and the person can make a teleportation book. And then, uh, well, it can't be a server waypoint, so we're going to have to go to a public waypoint. And uh, so when you right-click on, on a waypoint, it changes the book to where it is now a teleport to that um, waystone. So you can make a couple of these and give them out to your friends. So you can go to spawn, 
and then give it to people or you can sell it, uh, whatever you want to do. And when you right click it, don't move for five seconds. Boom. And now you're here. So that's, uh, that's, that's one thing that you can do now as well. Uh, another really cool thing you can do is make a teleportation scroll. Uh, sorry, warp scroll. And you can use this to teleport to any waystone. So it's a little bit more expensive, but you can just right click this and it'll take you to any waystone that you know at any point. So if we want to go to the mainland, it'll use it and it's a one time use. So it's kind of, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's one time use and it'll take you anywhere you want. So you can have a pocket full of scrolls if you wanted to, or once you've, you know, you've done, you've done your, your, your work on the server and you've, uh, finally made it to where you can get another star and you're flush with diamonds, you can, um, create a warp stone and a warp stone is unlimited teleports anywhere. So this has a 30 second cooldown, but just like the scroll that we just used, it can take you to anything that you, any waystone that you know of. So you can keep this on you and you can go to any waystone that you've visited or know, or it's in your, your, your deck of locations. So that's uh, that's going to basically replace our warp system, and I think it's a little bit more lore friendly, and it promotes exploration and people like having towns or areas or whatever with their own waystone um, in the middle of it to kind of you know centralize things. And this also will hopefully prevent people from creating four thousand warps that are just named uh, Potato 1, Potato 2, Potato 3, Potato 4, Potato 5, Potato 6, you know, Potato 1 Cave, Potato 2 Cave, you know, that sort of thing, because it was just filling up the config file for the warps that are on the server, and then people forget what warps they've made because they don't give them good names, or it's like, oh, what was that one? It was a Potato uh, Underground Cave Andesite, you know? And uh, now that you have to craft an item to get around, I'm hoping that that'll, um, you know, limit things. So now maybe people will have a public thing to their house, but they'll have a private waystone down in the mine. And uh, that'll be a little bit cleaner, a little bit more lore friendly. So that's the uh, that's the new waystone uh, mechanic, which I personally love. Uh, on our way down here, we have our bounty hunter board. And uh, this was a feature that was actually requested by uh, you guys on a stream when I was talking about features that, you know, what would you guys want to see on the server? Um, it being pirate themed and stuff like that, people asked to be able to create bounties. And so um, this is uh, this is the bounty hunter guy. Uh, I, yeah, you can set a bounty through here. So if we want to see all players, the person does not need to be online for you to set a bounty on. So if I go into MUDs here and say I wanted to add a 100, we'll add 200 doubloons. Uh, and it's it's going to charge me tax on top of that. I think it's 10%. Um, so the price to set a bounty on MUD is going to cost me 220. If I place a 200 one, and uh, I think... Was it? Yeah, I got to click his head and then hit yes. So I've just created a bounty on Mudboy for 200 doubloons. And uh, if you're on the server and you're just like, hey, I also want to set a bounty on Mud, you can just go and do that. Uh, and it will add to his overall bounty. So if you came over and you add 200 as well, Mudboy's total bounty is now 400. And uh, you can see that he has been added onto the most wanted board. He's currently the only one wanted on the server, so he is taking the number one slot. But if someone were to come in here and set a bounty, yes, you can set a bounty on yourself. And let's just set a custom one. Um, I'm going to set a uh, 1450 bounty. So that's going to round up to, or it's going to take 1.6 because of the tax. I'll hit yes. 
give it a couple of seconds for all the boards to update on the server. Mud is going to get bumped down to rank two eventually. And uh, then I will be put up on uh, into rank one. There it is. And so this board uh, will keep track of the top four people. But if there's more than four people that are on the server that have bounties at the time, you can come up to the bounty hunter here and right click and you will see a page here of all the bounties that are on the server uh, at that time. You can see the uh, I, I have the option to remove or edit and stuff, but you guys will be able to just see uh, the bounties on them. And then these bounties I'm by myself, so I can't show you, but they do appear above your head. So if you're walking around and you're wanted above your head, it's going to say wanted and it's going to say how much you're wanted for. So people will know. Um, and obviously you handle that the way any bounty hunter would by taking care of them. So uh, bounties will only be active for 24 hours, regardless if they are online or not. So as of right now, these bounties will remain active until uh for 24 hours after that you'll be refunded your money um i don't know if it gives you the tax back as well i don't think it does so um yeah that's how the bounty system works you can also buy your own bounty by doing bounty um slash bounty buy and then um you can see buy back for 2.17 there is an upcharge for buy buying your own um bounty I think it adds like 30% or something like that. I don't know. You guys can do the math of whatever my current bounty is to 2.17. And then um, it'll remove you from the board. And then Mud will eventually get moved back up there. And Mud is currently the, the most wanted person on the server right now. A little bit further down in spawn, down into the market area, is going to be the local market. And uh, this lady right here, if you right click on here, this is going to be your place to buy a lot of common items. Again, we're trying to keep this a little bit more um, vanilla friendly. So you're not going to be able to buy everything in here. Okay. You're going to be able to buy some stuff. Honestly, going to be a pretty good place to get ender pearls early on. Um, even ores if you wanted to get diamonds as well. You can also, you can see that you can sell stuff here as well. So if you have an excess amount of iron ingots, or if you have an excess amount of copper ingots, because you're going to, because everybody does, everybody has so much of it, you can come here and sell them. Um, and that's just by following the usage guide on the bottom. Uh, we also do have spawners here. I'm back and forth on this, okay? This is kind of like, this is, this is very vanilla breaking to me. I think I might remove this down the line uh, depending on your guys' response to this, maybe we'll keep it or not. The prices are kind of expensive. The iron golem one is a million, you know, because it's going to, that's going to be, you know, awful. But, um, zombie one, 120 K wolf, 250 of witch spawners, 500. See the, the prices are pretty high, which is the only reason why I'm kind of like, eh, maybe, maybe they'll be okay to keep in there. Uh, and then you could buy a couple of small bits of food as well. But uh, I, I encourage you guys to avoid using this shop. I think that this should only be really used if you cannot, for the life of you, find cocoa beans, melon seeds, beetroot, or something like that. Or you just need like a lot of stone bricks, you know, and smelting them is just going to take a lot of time. So something of that nature, I think, is is... I think I'll perfectly fine to use it. I think personally, I'm going to try to avoid it as much as possible um, and try to find things on the server myself. Across from them is the auction house. Uh, this works exactly how it did before. Um, you can see here a little guide on how to sell your stuff. So if we wanted to sell our death book here, we can do auction house sell. And that's going to open up a GUI here. Um and we're going to change this to an auction item and put our book into here. Um, single listing, continue. We're going to set our starting price to mm, like 5,000. Oh, right. Yeah. You got to do the bidding or the buyout first. 
forgot. That's like one limitation with this. So buy out. Uh, people can buy it out for twenty-five grand, but starting price I want it to be five thousand, and you can increase it in increments of five hundred at a time. So if we hover over it, you can see there. Double check this before you sell anything. Um, it's gonna put it up as a current price of five thousand. You could buy it now for twenty-five k, and the bids are gonna be incremented in five hundred at a time. Um, and then we have our buyout enable. If you don't want to buy out, you can always disable this and it'll take out that thing and it'll only, it'll just go until the timer's over. Um, and now we're going to list the item so that you can see that it's up there right now and it has seven days left. So this is going to probably be here. I don't, you know what? This is probably going to expire right before the server goes live. I'm going to hope anyways. Um, so anyways, Auction house still available and it's over at spawn. There's nothing down here just yet. And uh, what else? We will have uh, more fish. The competition plugin, uh, the fishing competition plugin is coming back and it's going to be greater than ever. Uh, Bruce has been working hard on a couple of uh, new features that we're hoping uh, is all going to be working 100% by the time the server's active. I think it is. It's already in really good shape right now, including uh, new fish. We, we've added uh, a couple of new fish as well, and I'm, I think I might go through there and if I have time to put a couple more in there. Uh, MC MMO skills are still around. So, um, I mean, I'm here, so I can... I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm able to break stuff here. No? Okay, wait, no. I gotta do something that's actually worth a skill. Let's, uh, let's go fish something. So, uh, for people that don't know the MCMMO, um, it just adds experience to all the skills that you do in Minecraft, whether it's mining, smelting, fishing. There you go. You can see my fishing level is 17 up on the top there. Um, and then this gives you, like, a couple of, like, additional skills and stuff like that um, in, in your abilities, I think. I don't know how the fishing one works. I think I just have like a passive chance of getting double fish. Um, and there it is. Um, a golden shovel uh, or finding treasure, I think is another one, but fishing. Oh, it's just, it's just the, the skill itself. So um, my fishing skill Master Angler, Treasure Hunter is currently locked. We need level 150 for that. Um, current stuff right now, it lowers your wait time for fishing. We have the chance of getting treasure. Anyways, uh, that's still on the server, and there's still a leaderboard and ranking system for that as well. Uh, and then one of the other big iterations on the server is... We no longer have a badge system because we're not giving out summer badges anymore. Now we have treasure keys. And there's uh, three treasure chests on the server. There's the chest of valor across the way here with the red flags. The forge fire chest. I need to change my speed, <laughs> flag speed. Um, forge fire chest, which is, you know, denoted by the red flags. The valor one over there is with blue. And then over here, under the green flags is the Elder's Relic one, which is the uh, the legend equivalent. That'll have all the legendary stuff. Um, so that's going to be the big thing now that our ranks will give you on the server is that the ranks, depending on your, your donation rank, um, you are going to get more kits. So if we do kit or slash kit open... Uh, because I'm admin, I see all the kits available. So there's now a weekly kit where you can redeem it every seven days uh, to get a thousand doubloons and two keys of uh, of the first two ones there. And then that's going to go on cooldown. Um, then uh, the first rank that you'll come onto the server is pirate. So everybody's going to have access to this one. Uh, this pirate one is going to give you five keys of... Uh, valor and forge fire and then it's going to give you a kit of gear of uh, uncommon pieces of gear and you can already see that these look a lot different than the last items 
Um, so we still have the same rarity system. We have common, which is these gray ones. We have uncommon, which is green. Rare, which is blue. Or uncommon, which is blue. <laughs> Forgetting my own uh, uh, ranking system, blue, here. And then uh, we have legendary. Um, I think green green was uncommon. Sorry, it's common, uncommon, rare, and then legendary. Um, and then a unique system here, which I don't want to I don't want to spoil that. Don't pause the video and then look at that. All right, I'm gonna show them later on. Um, so these keys work just like they did uh, on the other server, but now instead of having like five different things, we've consolidated it down to where chest of valor is going to be armor pieces. And the armor pieces is also going to have the chance of getting more keys for this one or even an elder key. Uh, and it works the same exact way. You just take the key, you right click on the chest, and then you get a piece of gear. Um, and so we now have the ability to create like super customized pieces of gear. And I don't want you to look at this gear ever and think that, oh, just because it is a leather pair of pants that it is exactly like a pair of leather pants uh, because I can make something look like a pair of leather pants but it has the same armor and toughness and all these other things as netherite um, so I don't want you to ever look at uh, a piece of gear this one's actually missing the tier um, the common tier on it I need to make sure I add that you can see how it says common there these ones do not say common on them um, a big uh, uh, thing that I mean by that is that this sailor shirt looks like a leather shirt, um, but it's not. It has more armor than a leather shirt, and it has, I think, like double the durability. You can see the durability down there. Um, if you ever see something that has the durability specifically mentioned on the bottom, it's probably because I upped the durability of it, uh, where ones that don't uh, is just going to use the default durability. So a lot of the gold items are like that so the gilded phoenix and golden banana obviously gold gear breaks very quick both of these i'm pretty sure have the same durability as diamond or netherite so um don't be scared of those items um and you know again just because something might be uncommon it could be a lot of things because these stats are now rolled these aristocrat boots that i bought that i just uh, got right now you can roll for the same exact item it's going to be different uh, because your fall damage reduction is going to be rolled, your armor value is going to be rolled, um, your enchants will be able to roll, so there's going to be variations of the same exact gear uh, given out. So depending... Holy cow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I guess I get to show you guys a pair of legendary uh, gear. That is crazy. Um, so I just got some cursed bone boots. You can see that these Cursed Bone Boots have a lot of additional stuff that you may not have seen on other regular gear. Because before, we were just working with uh, Minecraft enchants. Now, I have a whole lot more that I can play with. So, just because something only has two enchants on it, doesn't mean that it's worse than something that has uh, three enchants or something on it. Um, so, these Cursed Bone Boots are legendary. They offer ma magic damage reduction which is like potions and stuff like that. Uh, PvP damage reduction, so against people. Uh, armor value and armor toughness is pretty much, you know, what you grow to expect. This That's the main difference between netherite and diamond armor is the toughness that's on it, because only those two, two pieces of gear uh, naturally come with toughness. Um, and uh, so we can put these on, on our little, little feeties here. And um, I had to, uh, I made all of these. There's uh, 110 new pieces of gear in here. All of them have a certain level of um, <clears throat> enchantability from being rolled. So I've gotten two sailor shirts here. Uh, technically I have three. And you can see that all of them have different levels of armor involved on them. Uh, or rolled on them. But, you know, there are some stuff that is going to be a uh, flat number. So Depth Strider 1, I think it only has the opportunity of getting up to level 1. Um, and durability are all standard, but the armor can be rolled. So 
just right there, I just gained another 0.8 armor, even though it's the same exact item. Um, I love this. And holy cow, there's no way that I've got two <laughs> legendaries <laughs> from showing you guys right now. Um, okay, so we got Lucky Hand. Um, you can see that it also rolls toughness and armor, but it also has PvE damage reduction and luck rolled on it as well because you know it's lucky hand um so luck is a stat that's like normally in the background that's going to help you with loot drops and um i think that's about it just like loot drops and i i want to say like ore and stuff like that so uh anything that could be rolled off of luck so you could take your forge fire keys and i'm sure you've guessed forge fire is going to be uh weapons and tools and this is the this is one that actually has two pages worth. Um, we got Pogrog, Pogrod here, um, and <laughs> a couple of a couple of stuff that I'm actually I really don't want to spoil for you guys, but uh, they're great. I love the items in here. There's a couple that I'm really really stoked about and would love to see what you guys um, uh, think of those items. Let's see if I can't pull a, another legendary from here. But uh, this whole new system is fantastic and um, spoil, spoiling uh, an, a unique item there. So the, the other biggest big thing about this whole setup is that we now have the option of creating set pieces. And what is, what is a set piece? It's something that if you're wearing multiple pieces of that set, you'll get um, different attributes. So this right here, You'd see in the red text right there on the bottom, it says the Mongoose Pirates. This is part of the Mongoose Pirate uh, set, okay? All set pieces will be set as unique. You can see the tier is unique down there. And if I wear three pieces of this, I'll get 10% 10 per, uh, 10 damage reduction across the board. Uh, if I wear four pieces, I'll get another 10%, but only in PvP or 10% or towards PvE damage. And if I wear five, uh, five pieces, I get another 10%, making it 20% PvE damage. Uh, but if I wear a full set, which is five, um, which is all four armor pieces plus a piece of the gear, so there's going to be a couple of pieces of gear from the Mongoose Pirate set. When an enemy attacks you, a magical shield appears around you, protecting you from 60% of all damage for 10 seconds. Um, this is such a crazy thing to, to see happen in Minecraft. Um, you can also see that Righteous Oath of the Sea here, which is the best fishing rod currently on the on the server, uh, is a two-handed thing. So what that means is basically if you're trying to do two uh, or wield two things, um, you're going to get slowness because it's too much. And uh, if it's like a pickaxe or a sword or something like that, it's not going to work as a sword or pickaxe or a tool or anything. You need both hands to hold the item. Um, so you can have a full set of the Mongoose Pirate stuff and, and use a fishing rod to get the full set bonus, which is that magical shield. Um, the other thing that is not clearly stated in here is that the Mongoose Pirate set is fully unbreakable and fully soulbound. So they will never run out of durability and you will never lose them. So... Uh, I think that that doesn't apply to lava, so don't drop it in lava. Um, but outside of that, uh, you will never lose these pieces of, of gear. Uh, and so what is in the Elder's Relic? So this, just like last server, this is going to be your, your best bet of picking up legendaries because every single legendary is going to be in here. Uh, along with the opportunity of getting more keys for other chests and a way of getting a decent amount of money. Um, but this is also going to be the place where you can find the set pieces. There's three sets on the server right now. The Sparrow set, Blackbeard set, and then the Mongoose Pirate set. Um, so the regular uniques you can see are in this like um, dark teal. And then the Mongoose set is in the brighter teal. Uh, but these are both set pieces. So if we um, pick up like one of the higher ranks, which comes with elder keys, that, that one right there uh, gives you a lot of money. Um, 
a good amount of gear. That's actually one of my favorite items of the game. Um, but it also gives us a couple of elder keys as well. And uh, I mean, I forgot to even mention, but all the keys are have 3D models, which is so cool. Um, I made these models myself and I figured out how to do a custom resource pack uh, along with this chest here. And all of these um, will be, it's a resource pack that you're going to be required to download uh, to join the server. And But it's all done automatically. When you join the server, it's going to be like, hey, we use a custom resource pack. You need this to play. And it'll download and install and do everything for you. And that's it. So this works exactly the same way. You go in and you roll stuff. And there we go. We got another legendary sword. And we got the legendary shield. And uh, all of these ones have like unique properties. So like this bow, something we couldn't do before. This one actually has poison damage. Um, so when you, uh, I don't have an arrow with me, but you can see that uh, there's like a little bit of green slime coming off from the back of it. It's because it has poison damage. Um, also the uh, infinity thing works still, but you need an arrow. The other stat that I can change on bows is arrow velocity, which uh, you'll see some bows have a different amount of arrow velocity, uh, like Starfall here, which does fire damage. Uh, we're going to need more arrows. You'll see, just pay attention to how fast the, the arrow goes. So you can see where I'm firing here and the drop off, but you can see that there's cool fire effects that happen. Uh, this one, you can see how much higher it's landing on on the on where I was aiming because it has a higher velocity. So keep that in mind as well. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, all the gear now gets randomly rolled. You both can roll the same gear or whatever, but it could have better stats in one category or worse stats in another. So there's going to be a lot of uniqueness to all of the gear around. Um, and I'm very, 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 very excited about all that stuff. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I'm, I cannot wait for you guys to get on here and then uh, break everything <laughs> and, and uh, just, you know, make me hate myself. But it's, this has been about a month now of constant work. All of my free time has been uh, working on this server and adding all these new items. All of these like brand new items uh, that I put into the server that took like 30 something hours of just constant coding of like naming schemes and everything like that. And then like adding them into it's just it's a lot of work. <laughs> and I really hope that you guys can see that. We're trying to keep things a little bit more lore friendly and a little bit more immersive with uh, all of this. Um, and we're trying to change things to make hopefully the longevity of the server um, last a little bit longer, you know, uh, keep people on the server to play and everything like that. My, myself included. Um, so don't expect to, uh, there's not the, the rank system. The only thing that I think is different is that at a certain rank, I forget which one, I think it might be, pull this up because this is an order. I think at the carpenter rank, um, that's the only rank that currently has a permission that no other ranks have outside of the kits. And that is the slash jump command. Because I know that for a lot of people that slash jump is, is kind of important for building stuff. Um, but I really didn't want to like let it, let that loose for everybody on the server because I don't want people to use it to spam and run away from maybe being wanted, but I know that it's really good for building. So we just put it on a cooldown. So I think it's like on a 10 second cooldown, um, but just slash jump. It'll take you to wherever you need to go. And it's a fairly low rank on the server as well. So um, that's... Uh, that's where we're at right now on the server. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I cannot wait for this to be open finally. Um, there is going to be a lot of stuff that we have planned coming down the line. Um, 
that uh, that we currently can't get working because plugins are just getting broken left and right. Um, one of which is a better clan system because right now you can actually create your own clan by doing slash clan create um, and then the name. So uh, I've already made one called Mongoose and you can invite multiple people uh, up to 10 people uh, in there. And there's going to be an experience system where um, you'll get uh, experience from doing quests or completing things or whatever, and you'll get experience rewarded to your clan specifically if you went and did something on the server um, that uh, that would warrant experience. So, like, I'm, I'm trying to work on a quest system to where you guys can deliver stuff and um, do weekly things like that to where you know, deliver 64 copper ingots and get 10 experience for your clan. You know, you get five people to do that. That's 50. That's your first level, you know, um, stuff like that. But that the mechanics of all that stuff is really um, difficult to work out in the back end. Um, there's a lot of plugins that all need to talk to each other and we have stuff, some stuff working right now, but it's not it's not where I want it to be, and I don't want to focus on that right now because that's a small part of this server, and I'd rather us get up and going, and then we have a patch day down the road where it's like, hey, functionality is now added to the server. You guys are good. Um, and uh, I think if we do, was it clan? Uh, there is a, oh yeah, top. Clan top, and we do level. There's a little hierarchy thing here. I think I might turn this into an NPC. That way you guys don't have to type the command. You can just go and click on someone. Um, I'd love for the first three positions here to be able to have like additional stuff. I just, I have a lot of really high level <laughs> ideas for the server um, that I don't think that we can actually make work without hiring um, someone to create a full on clan plugin that has all these features that I want put into it. And I've already put in a significant amount of money just to get to where we're at right now. So <clears throat> anyways, that's going to do it for now. I hope you guys uh, enjoy playing on the server and um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.